Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. Part two of our depressurization of the 7.3. Number one was installing the exhaust pass on the passenger side. Number two is how we make a simple, quick, but very effective catch can and bypass. So, first thing that you are going to need is going to be a 8 inch piece of Schedule 40 4 inch sewer pipe. Now I've got this all pre-cut already pre-drilled. I don't think anybody here needs to watch me make and cut tubing. Then you're going to need two cap ends. Now this is the type of Schedule 40 that you can bury by the way. Don't get the kind that has the foam inside uh, that will melt. Uh, but this right here has 600 PSI capability and has a temperature rating that is beyond what we'll ever need, so don't worry about melting. Next, what you're going to need is to cut yourself a 3-inch piece separate and then cut it and remove enough of it so it just slides inside here. But what you'll need to do is to cut first at 5 degrees so you have a slight angle. So you'll have a flat factory, flat factory, or flat side that you cut, and a 5 degree wedge. Then you're going to need two of these right here, which are... 3 8 barb, 5 8 thread, and these right here are metal. Um, don't use plastic, don't use anything else. I've tried, it, it, this, this is on every one of my trucks in the fleet. I've tried it all, this is what works. If you hit the comments and go, can you use a 3 inch? No. This is what works right here. Next, what you're going to need is a cutting top for like cutting in your kitchen, countertop cutter. Uh, and this right here is 7 sixteenths. You can go up to half inch, but minimum is 7 sixteenths. No more than half, otherwise it's not going to fit the bevel. Of course, you're going to need primer glue and some different drill bits. If you did this mod right here, then you're going to have this big drill bit right here, this step drill. And then this right here is a 5 16 and I'll get into that when we get to that. This makes no difference if you want to use whatever have adder. And then we're going to need two bolts. Don't care if you use carriage bolts, cap bolts. Don't care if you use grade 2, grade 20. What is important here is the nut. You want to make sure that whatever fastener that you use, that this nut is larger than this cap right here. That's all we're worried about. Whatever variation you want to use makes no, no difference whatsoever. So we're going to cut this right here to 8 inch. Then because we have this cap cover that's going to come on here and a cap cover that's going to come on to the bottom, these are where these two bolts are going to go. And that's what's going to hold it to the frame. Don't have to worry about putting two small holes in the frame. The truck isn't going to fold up into a little piece and, and blow up. It's just two small holes. Don't worry about it. But this is critical of what side that you put it on. I'm building this 
because this is the passenger side mod that we made. So the inlet is going to be down here and the outlet is going to be up on top. If you build this and the next video, which we're going to show you how to just flip on the other driver's side and how to do that, then you'd want to do it on this side because the tube is going to come down on the driver's side, down over here, and exit through the top. We're on the passenger side, down through here, down through here. So this is where it goes on the frame. Can you lead both sides to one of these? No. This right here, the 7 16 cutting board, this is where this step is going to come into play. What we want to do is we want to make little cups inside. So I set this right here with this piece of tape at the 3564. That's where I want to stop. So it's going to make itself a nice cup inside and the lead through on the, on the top, because this is going to be the top, that's going to be a smaller hole. The whole concept here is, is that when the vapor comes up, it collects inside and will come down and very little will actually end up going through the hole. But the little bit that goes through the hole, on one side here, we want to make sure that we put a little drip back little C just like that, the size will make a difference. The amount of holes that I have here is 16 holes. We don't want to go beyond that and we don't want to be less than that, so 16 holes. And this right here is going to be sitting at the bottom of that 5 degree wedge inside here. So it's going to drip on down like that, whatever ends up still in inside. So we got our four inch, eight inch go through, put your cover on all the way. I'm not going to do that at this point, but put it on all the way tight. Drill in your hole and this hole right here is going to be for the 5 8 threaded end and that drill bit has to be specifically 37 64 then go ahead and mark it and mark that it's the bottom or mark that it's the top but then to get it back off again we just take anything a piece of wood whatever and knock it off This one right here is the bottom. Right here, yeah, I chose the 5 16 bolt, and the drill size for that is 19 64. And that'll screw in just fine right here. Now that'll be sitting on the bottom, and that'll act as your drain over time of any of the crud that ends up inside of here. So that being said, general premise here. Keep in mind that you got the hole here. This is your outward. So what we want is to have the lowest part of your five degree wedge right here. And this right here, this mounting right here, goes about a third way down. It, it, you don't have to, you know, worry about exact inches. It's not that kind of science. So, go ahead on the inside, making sure that you're going to leave room for this. Get the inside all primered. Get the outside all primered.
And I know some of the plumbers uh, or people who have experience with plumbing is like, oh, don't touch the primer. It, it isn't that critical here. We're not putting pressure on this, so don't worry about it. Take your uh, compound, your, your glue, put it on the inside just for the first part that you're going to install. And once again, you got to be plan this out so this top of this sits below here so you can get the bolt in. This is the lowest part that's going this way. So we get that in there. This right here goes in. These cups go down. This part of the drawback, the drip back, that goes in like that. Then we come back with the glue. Put that on in here. Part of the wedge again. And that's in there. Then we're going to take the bolts that are going to hold it to the frame. And once again, the size doesn't matter, whatever you want. It's all about the nut here. Get these in. Put your nut on. Now we don't have to worry about uh, tightening this down. Just give it, just snug it up a little bit. You'll be more than fine. Second bolt, same thing, get that in. Put that on. Then I marked what the bottom was going to be. I marked what the top was going to be. I marked these accordingly too. And once again, we we don't have to make believe like we're plumbing a house here. Just a uh, little bit of primer, a little bit of glue is going to be just fine. It's not going to fail over time. And then I put lineup marks. You can see I got a little lineup mark right there, a little lineup mark right here. So we got that on, then the bottom right here, same thing. So one line of glue is going to do you just fine, primer and glue that is. Same thing, I do my little line up here with my, before I took it apart before. Then I would go through and screw these in. I'm not going to do that right here, but I would go through and screw these in all the way. And basically, voila, we have our catch can. So the tube is gonna come off of here, come down, not up against the exhaust, but you're gonna pitch it off towards the outside of the truck come down through the frame, it'll connect in here, and then this right here, you can head it off to the back, wherever you want it to end. Doesn't make any difference at this point right here. Um, what we don't want though is to have it running uphill the whole way. We want it going down the frame somewhat level. I usually dump mine out right by the back tire. That way it's uh, right by the exhaust doesn't uh, cause a scene or anything like that. So basically that is the nub of making a quick catch can and once again any of the 
items on the inside here is going to wedge itself back down into the bottom and then you'll be able to drain it out in the future. You can do it every oil change. Um, this right here, I, it, it's, I, I go a whole year before I even have to remove this right here and it, I, I've also tried pep cocks, but you just got to make sure on the inside that you grind it down so it's flush with the bottom of this cap. Otherwise, oil will sit inside and it'll never be able to drain all the way out. It's an option, but this just works a heck of a lot easier. But you would run this in tight. Um, if you want to use a little rubber washer on here so you don't get little drips on the driveway, if you don't care about that, this right here actually does a pretty good job. Very, very rarely do I ever see a drip just by screwing this in and screwing it back out and having it sit if it has a little bit of uh, oil in it or vapor or whatever the case may be. Now as far as mounting underneath the truck, now you got your two bolts. A couple different ways of doing this. Uh, basically, you can just put it up against the frame use a marker of any type and mark where you're going to drill the holes but your location on the frame really doesn't make a difference just so you're happy i mean if you want to mount it high uh, for clearance if you want to mount it a little bit lower it, whatever you're happy with you know just go ahead and do that drill your holes in there install using a level on one of the sides so you know I kind of jumped ahead there but use a level so it's sitting somewhat level it's not sitting kitty wampus and make sure the truck is also on a level playing field as close as you can get keeping in mind that you know your, your drip back is over here sits on an angle like that that's why we install it the way we you know that's the way we build it the way we build it but then drilling your holes putting it into the frame, and then use two nylon nuts on the back. Not the type of nut where it's, you know, bent, that, you know, that style of locking nut. Use the nylon nut, that way you don't have to worry about these bolts right here spinning because you just basically, you know, snug these up tight. If you put one of those locker nuts on there, you have a chance of actually spinning that, and then you'll be throwing wrenches and be upset. So just use a nylon nut. Uh, it won't come off. Very, very easy to install. So basically, that's how this part of it is done. And once again, you know, you put one on each side. You, you don't want to be sharing tubes from the left side, right side, into just a, a single catch can like this. And then it makes it real easy. You can just unscrew that and bing, bam, boom. You can drain it out in the future. So that's how this part of it is handled. But there it is. So I hope you've learned something today. And you take it easy and you have a good day. Icebreaker Olatak is powered by six diesel engines. Sometimes, however, it needs a seventh diesel. The Ford Super Duty Power Stroke. It's packed with 525 pound-feet of torque. More than any truck of its kind on Earth. Ford F-Series, the world's best-selling truck, 25 years running, has no boundaries.